Are you guys tired of messing around with SD cards and want to be able to send files to your printer over your network? Well, now you can. We have our EasyPi R4 Plus kits out, which allow you to do this over a hardwired Ethernet connection or even over Wi-Fi. So I'm going to show you guys how to set that up right now. Our EasyPi R4 kits are actually our fourth version of these type of kits that we've come out with over the years. What these allow you to do is to control your printer over the network and you also get a plethora of other plugins to do different things like time lapses, arc welding, and even managing your EEPROM in the printer. If you have an auto bed leveling system, we also have a plugin that's pre-installed that allows you to actually see your bed mesh data. Installing this kit is very easy and you can see right here I have it affixed to my Ender 3 Pro and it's running a print right now. There's no SD card in this printer and right now the EasyPi is sending data over the USB cable to the printer that I uploaded to it over the network. This allows you to have your printers far away from your computer and not have to be running back and forth to put SD cards in to start prints up. So I'm going to show you guys how to mount it to your printer, how to connect the cables, and then walk you through all the features we have in the interface and even start a print. So let's get to it. So to get our EasyPi set up, we're gonna go ahead and use my Ender 3 here as an example. I've got my AC adapter here, the EasyPi controller, and the 2020 mounting bracket. So I'm gonna use this bracket here to attach to this printer, and this is a universal bracket that works on any printer that has the 2020 type extrusion, and you can stick it wherever you want. In my case, I'm gonna put it on the back corner here. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is take the two extrusion nuts and we're gonna put these in where we're gonna put the clamp. So if I want the clamp here, I'm gonna to need to put the two roll-in extrusion nuts right here. And then we're gonna to want to align them up with the holes that are in the actual bracket. When using these, it's useful to use like an Allen wrench or even a screw to roll these into the extrusion. If you've never used these before, the way they work is they roll in and there's a little detent here that keeps them from sliding back and forth, but you can move them once they're in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in now. So as you can see, they're in here and you can move them back and forth. And what I like to do to get these aligned is I'm gonna just take my little Allen key and push it through the hole here and line it up so this one's gonna meet with this hole and this one's gonna meet with that hole. Now that they're lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and insert the M4 screws and go ahead and tighten them down. And you can see here, the bracket is nice and firmly installed on the printer. So you're gonna to wanna to line up the little holes here on the case with the little ridges in here. We're gonna put it at an angle and push it up. I'm gonna have my USB ports facing forward. And just like that, it snaps into place. Now, if you also have a board in your printer where it keeps the LCD on and you've got the optional easy blocker cable, you'll plug that cable into the USB port on here before you plug the USB cable in for the printer. So I've got my USB cables run here. This one is for my camera that's mounted on the bed. And then this one is going to my printer and the other end is here. You can see I have it all nicely cable managed in the rear. They're all tied up right here. Now your printer can go in any of these ports and the webcam should go into the black USB ports. Some webcams do not work in the blue ports. Now I'm gonna plug the other end of the USB for my printer into its control board. Okay, so now we have the EasyPi mounted. We have the USB for our printer connected, the USB for our camera if we're using one. We need to go ahead and turn our printer on at this point. Go ahead and connect your network cable and then plug the USB-C power into the power port on the Pi kit. Now, in this little window here to the right of the blue power button, this is where our power and activity light are. If the light is not lighting up green, you probably have the switch version of the power cable. Go ahead and press this button to turn it on. And you can see the power LEDs on. And if you look at it straight on, you'll also see a blue LED to the left. That's the indicator LED to see if it's reading the SD card or not. You'll need to give it about a minute to do its initial boot. Once that happens, the IP address will be displayed on your printer screen. 
So we're gonna go ahead and let this boot up and then wait for the IP address to pop up here. So you can see here, the IP address is now on our printer's LCD. We can type this into our web browser to log into the Pi interface. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and type in the IP address that's on my printer screen. Yours will be different and hit enter. And we're gonna log in with the default, which is easy pie. And the password is capital E Z capital P one dot capital T H three capital D. This is also in our documentation. So you don't need to worry about writing it down. Go ahead and check the remember me checkbox here. If you want it to stay logged in on this session, hit log in. And you can see here it's connected to our printer. You can see that by the state being operational. You can also check here under connection. It found the serial port and the baud rate for your printer automatically. So I'm just going to walk you through the interface here. You can see here that there's actually a G code file showing because this is on my printer's SD card. You can upload to your printer's SD, which I don't recommend, but you can do it if you want to. But what you're going to want to do, and this is where this is really powerful, is go ahead and hit the upload button and you can upload slice G code files right to the printer. So if I hit, so if I hit upload, I can go to my G code folder here and these are G codes that I've sliced. You can see here, I can just double click a G code file. And just like that, it sends it over the network and it sends it to the EasyPi for processing. We have automatic arc welding here. You can see it automatically did that. And there's one other thing I'd recommend changing before you start printing and that's your printer settings. So we can go into the wrench here. We can go to printer profiles and you can see by default, there's just a generic printer. So we can go ahead and hit the little edit thing here. And this is Tim's Easy Ender 3. And I'm gonna tell it this is an Ender 3. You can put whatever you want in here. This is just for you to identify it. And the important thing is setting your printer settings. So I know this printer is 235 by 235 by 250. So I'm changing the X, Y, and Z. So refer to your slicer settings and these should match whatever's in your slicer. You can also then go double check that these settings match your printer. By default, it's gonna be a 0.4 nozzle diameter. So if you wanna change that, you can do that here. Um, how many extruders you have and the default extrusion length is what controls the default setting when you're actually telling it to extrude from within Octoprint for manual control. So at this point, I'm gonna hit confirm and then save. So I'm gonna go through the interface here with you guys. The first default tab is the temperature tab. You can actually set your ABS and PLA settings. These are also configurable. So if you wanna set your own presets for bed and hot end temperatures, you can actually do that in the little settings here and go to temperatures and you can add as many presets as you want. So for example, I like using 240 for my ABS for the default and 100 for my bed. And for PLA, I like to do 230 because I typically print hotter filament. So if I hit save, you can go ahead and come back here and you can see the new settings are saved. So if I go ahead and tell it to go PLA and then PLA, you can see now it's gonna start telling the printer to heat up the bed and the hot end. So you can see at the top here, it tells you the hot end temperature and the bed temperature. You can see in the graph here, it'll show your hot end and your bed target and then the actual temperature it's at. And it gives you a nice graph. Now, if we go over to the control section here, if you have a webcam set up, this is where it'll show you the webcam. You can also make this bigger by double clicking it and it'll give you a full screen view. You can also control the printer here. So I can actually hit here and hit home and you can see the printer is now auto homing X and Y. And if I hit home Z, it's gonna go ahead and home Z. You can also turn the motors off, turn your layer fan on and off. If you have an auto bed leveling probe, you can actually set your probe offset right here. You can also set your feed rate modifier. So that's the equivalent of turning the knob on the screen. You can actually do manual moves in different increments. So like if I click 10 here and click right or left, you can see here, it's gonna move things forward and backwards. And same thing for the Z. This one right here, the tool E. So if I hit extrude right now, it's gonna push filament out and I am hot enough to extrude. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this a couple times just to show you guys. You can see there I'm extruding filament. So you can go ahead and control it. Now, if I go ahead and try to move the bed, you can see it's locked. I can click motors off and there you go. They're unlocked. I can also turn my layer fan on, you can see there. And I can also turn it off. 
Now this next tab here is actually the G-Code viewer. So I actually uploaded a little file here I'd sliced previously. You can see a preview here of your G-Code. We also have the terminal commands here. So if you ever hear me talking about, you know, typing commands, we can go ahead and do that right here. I can, you know, tell it M502, which is to reset the EEPROM and then M500 to save. You can send all those commands through this. You can also tell it to G28, which is home. So we go back here, you can see the printer's homing. So this is all built in. The other thing that's cool is this also does time lapses and by default, it does time lapses whenever the Z changes height. You can set all these settings to whatever you want. These are pretty good default settings. This is what I use. So this is what the Pi kits are preset up to use. If you want to play around with these, you can as well. Um, if you are doing a vase mode print, you're probably going to want to change it to timed or just turn it off if you don't want a time lapse. So after a print, this is going to automatically go ahead and generate a time lapse for you. If you have an auto bed leveling probe, you can actually go and get a mesh. So I have an auto bed leveling probe. I can click settings here. So if you want to go ahead and get the mesh data, they do have examples here for this plugin. So I'm going to click here and we're using bilinear bed leveling. So if you're using our easy ABL or our firmware, you can just copy this and then paste that in there. The visualization here are just different settings that you can have if you want to change how the, the actual mesh looks. And you can go through all these different settings and play with them if you want. But I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now I can go ahead and hit update mesh. And now the printer is going to go ahead and get me a fresh mesh. So if we go back to the camera, it's going to go ahead and do a probe. And if we go back here, we should get a nice mesh showing what our bed looks like. There we go. So now I actually have a visual mesh of what my bed looks like. The next one is the EEPROM editor. So this actually allows you to reset and load your EEPROM. So you can actually save different EEPROM settings. So if I go here, we can change our steps per millimeter, our feed rates, accelerations, PID settings, all sorts of different things. And this, since this printer has our EasyBoard V2 in there, we can actually set our driver currents as well. So let's say I want to modify this. I can just go here, change the setting, hit save, and it will then send it to the printer. You can also back up your EEPROM settings here to the actual Pi itself. And then you can actually then re-upload the backups to your printer board. So that's pretty cool. This one is for if you have a power monitoring plug like our Easy Plug Plus. This will actually show you a graph of the power usage and whatnot, but since I don't have that configured in here, it's just showing blank. And then if you want to change the settings for Arc Welder, which is another plugin we preload on here to help give you smoother prints, you can change the settings right through here by clicking the Edit Settings button. And these are pretty good defaults. We're using the plugin defaults because they work really well. So I've gone through and shown you guys actually how to navigate through the interface. If I wanted to actually run a print, my process I use is I will go ahead and use the preheat button. Since I manually set my temperatures here, it says cool. So just to show you how this works, if you had just loaded a file and it wasn't preheated, you can go ahead and hit preheat. And what's nice is you can see here, it pulled the hot end in bed settings from the G-code file and it's preheating. And at this point, I'll just go ahead and hit print. And then once the printer's at temperature, it's gonna start the print. So as you can see, it's really easy to get this hooked up. You basically put it onto the printer, connect your USB cables and power it all up, and then you can access it on your network. Now, as I mentioned, when I was connecting the network cable, if you wanna use it over Wi-Fi, there is a separate video on how to set up the Wi-Fi, and that's also fairly easy. One of the benefits of getting this kit from us is if you do need help, we do include technical support free of charge. And one of those things included is even remote connecting to your computer to help you set up the Wi-Fi if for some reason you couldn't get it going on your own. This is something we use on every single one of our printers. I'm not even exaggerating. We don't use any SD cards in any of our printers. We have our EasyPi kits on every single printer in our print farm, and it makes managing the print operations so much easier. In addition to that, if you're somebody that likes posting and sharing time lapses and you have a camera hooked up to the EasyPi kit, it can automatically generate time lapses easily without having any additional need for you to do anything. One of the things I do recommend is if you have your printer in a room where the lights get turned off, is put a set of our Easy Neo pixels on your printer so you can actually have the camera still see the print going even when the lights are off in the room. You can see here on my Ender 3 Pro, up at the top, in the top bar, I have our Easy Neo kit, and this lights it up really nicely at night, even when it's pitch black in this room. 
So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and shoot us a message on our website if you want. You can go to contact us on the website at th3dstudio.com. We'll be happy to answer any questions. I hope you guys really enjoy these kits, and this was a big undertaking considering our availability of Raspberry Pi boards has been basically zero for over a year. So we redesigned this kit from the ground up with one of the new Rock 4 boards, and we found that these boards are actually not only faster, but they give better Wi-Fi and they have a power button. So before, you would actually have to go into the interface to shut down the Pi if you wanted to disconnect it. Now all you have to do is press the little blue button on the back of the board, and it will automatically safely shut down the printer. And once a little power light shuts off, you're safe to disconnect it. So I hope this demonstrates how to use these Easy Pie kits. And I really hope you guys enjoy using them because I honestly cannot go back to using SD cards after having Octoprint on my printers. One of the other things I will mention is that there are two third-party plugins that we do not pre-bundle, but I can give them a shout out. And one of them is the Obico plugin, which allows you to do not only remote access to your printer, but they also have what they call spaghetti detection. So if your print's failing, it'll actually use the camera to look at the print and stop it. And there's another one out there that I actually personally haven't used, but people said they like it called Octoprint Anywhere. So I'm gonna give those guys a shout out and what those will do is allow you to even access your printer when you're not at home. One thing I will recommend against is port forwarding. If you guys are aware of that, if you're a network person, I would not recommend directly port forwarding to your Pi because if somebody decides to be malicious and they start sending DDoS attacks to it and it, it can actually overload it and shut down your print, which nobody wants that. Those third-party services use like a reverse proxy type of thing to tunnel in, so there's no port forwarding and it's very secure. I think that about wraps this video up. I might have some more content with these kits, but these are probably one of my favorite upgrades after auto bed leveling to do to my printer just because it's so nice and so easy to use. So I'll see you guys on the next video, and as always, happy printing.